This book is called The Physical Foundation of Language. The main theme of it is that there is a much more important relation between language and gesture than has previously been recognized. Usually gesture is thought of as a rather unimportant accompaniment of speech. But the thesis advanced in this book is that gesture, in fact, gives a clue to the origin of the words which go to form language. More specifically, the suggestion is that for what one might call primitive words, that is words referring to familiar objects, parts of the body, trees, flowers, obvious sounds, animals and birds. For these familiar objects, the structure of the word is related in a specific way to the character of the object to which it refers. Now, since uh, Hockett, who attempted to list the design features of language, it has been argued that one of the design features, one of the most important design features of language, is the arbitrariness of the word, that is, the lack of any relationship between the form of the word and the object or percept to which the word refers. Hockett, in fact, says there is no geometric or iconic relation between the word and the object and so on to which it refers. This, of course, is uh, an, uh, on the same lines as Saussure's original uh, proposal that arbitrariness was one of the principal features of language. And both Hockett and Saussure say that though in onomatopoeic words there appears to be some relation between the word and what it refers to, e.g. cuckoo and so on, in fact onomatopoeic words are marginal to language and in, in many cases uh, even onomatopoeic words are not a, a direct imitation uh, of the sound or object to which they refer. Uh, they are conventionalized also in the same way as it is said uh, words generally are conventional forms. Now I don't want to discuss here in any general way uh, what the meaning of arbitrary might be and why there are general reasons for thinking uh, it is ludicrous, in fact, to say that words in their origins must have been arbitrary uh, constructions. Um, these arguments have been set out in various papers I've written uh, and uh, it is simpler to refer to those and to repeat them now. The object of this recording is really to demonstrate in a way that is not possible in print what the specific relation uh, is that in my view and indeed in my experience exists now between a large number of words and the uh, objects or percepts to which they refer. This relationship can be demonstrated in the form of gesture and perhaps gesture is too narrow and prejudicial a word 
uh, this relationship can in fact be demonstrated uh, in the systematic uh, relation between the movements of the hand and arm or the movements of the mouth uh, and the specific sounds which go to form uh, individual words. This book, The Physical Foundation of Language, contains photographs of the systematic relation between uh, word sounds and the elements of gesture or the elements of movement of the hand and arm. Uh, these photographs, of course, are quite inadequate to uh, demonstrate the relation because the essence of gesture is the movement, the sequence of movements which take place, the combination of elementary movements to form uh, more elaborate uh, movements which are related to uh, words and their meanings. Uh, a video recording of this kind, in fact, is an admirable solution to the problem of demonstrating uh, this systematic uh, relation between gesture and words. Though it may not be very clear uh, in the recording, uh, the book is now open to the pages which contain the photographs of uh, a puppet, a wooden puppet, uh, demonstrating the different elements uh, of uh, arm, hand and arm position which are related to specific sounds. The sounds are analysed into five categories. These are called the main vocalic line, the main consonantal line, the projective group, the lateral group, and the circular group. 